To run this program we need to have Google Earth and in Google Earth we need to have the Global Volcanism Program. To be able to get this uh, you can get it from my Padlet or you go to the Smithsonian Institute volcano.si.edu and you can find it in their Google Earth's placement. We uh, need the link. Once you've downloaded that you're going to load that into Google Earth uh, and then it will give you a series of volcanoes which you can expand and have a look at. Uh, once we start to zoom in we can see here uh, the Ring of Fire, lots of volcanoes that we can work with. So uh, we're going to have a look at the volcanoes close to Abu Dhabi for our Abu Dhabi students. So uh, looking in the general vicinity of Abu Dhabi we find the closest volcanoes are actually in Iran. When we click on one of the triangles provided by the Smithsonian Institute, we find we get a lot of interesting information. Uh, this particular set of volcanoes is a volcanic field of 14 Mars. Not quite as interesting for us uh, as Basman, which uh, really is going to be our closest volcano. It's a stratovolcano, quite a decent height, 3,500 metres. We get their latitude and longitude and other information about the volcano from Google. The other thing that we're going to want to do is know how far this is from Abu Dhabi. So uh, we're going to go and use the ruler and we're going to click on our volcano here and we're going to draw across to Abu Dhabi and find that we are looking at approximately 688 kilometers away as the closest volcano. So latitude and longitude program called terrain to still and we're going to put in that latitude and that longitude this will bring us to Iran brought us across to be able to see if we zoom in with the scroll that we're actually almost on top of the Basman volcano zoom in with your scroll then we need to change the model details we want a box size of 600 and a vertical scaling of 2. Try to make sure everybody in the class uses the same vertical scaling. We're going to line this up on top of our volcano so that it then click create and download. It should open in your local computer's zip and if we go into the subfolder we'll find that we have a model. We're going to extract that or we can drag mine into this folder here. Once we have got it in our computer, we can rename it. This file is a still file. It will be opened by the program that we're going to use. In this case, it's associated with the XYZWare file, which is what is needed for the printer. Double click on it to open it so that we can check the file. When the file goes to open, it will quite likely be out of size because of the 600 box that we've created, but it can also be out of size for another reason which we will investigate. We do want to auto resize it, we'll click yes. We have a, an ad that we have to get rid of here, and we have an error that we have discovered. The still volcano has a tail we'll need to get rid of that. If yours does not have a tail but fills the whole screen then you'll be able to skip to the next step. So keeping this file in mind we're going to drag this into a program called Mesh Mixer. This Autodesk free program is going to help us to fix this model. We're going to click on Edit, Make Solid. It's going to fill the hole and remove that tail. Once that is done we're going to accept it and then we'll export it back out not a save but an export so we're going to export it back to where the original still file was that we used but we're going to call it the fixed file in this case now that that is saved or not saved exported we can close it we do not need to save it we don't want to save it as a mesh mixer file, we don't need that. We're now ready to check that file again. Once again we'll need to resize it and in this case uh, we now see that it has used the full width and depth of the printer. Uh, it's resized to that. So we've also got quite a large base that we'll want to get rid of. So there are two things that we're going to need to do before we print this. We're going to want to remove the base 
and we want to scale it so it fits better within the print area. Let's close that again and we're going to go into a program called Tinkercad, tinkercad.com and create a new design. In Tinkercad we need to choose the file, we're going to choose the file that we have fixed and we're going to scale it by 50%. 60% or even 75% might be okay as well. We'll use 50%. Once the file has finished loading, if you click on the little square here, you'll be able to see the dimensions. The dimensions are good. They are under 10 by 10, which is nice. The workspace we have with the XYZ DaVinci Junior is 15 by 15. So this has been a pretty good import. We now have our object and we are going to modify that by removing the base. We'll do that by lowering the volcano to the level of the work plane. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the base by creating a hole. So we'll drag a hole box out. We want to lower that to the plane at 20, which brings it to just level with the plane there, as you can see and we're going to drag the hole out so that it covers the whole of the base. Next we are going to drag a box around both and group them. Now the saved item has uh, appeared. It's a good idea to change the name. Tinkercad will always give a very strange name to any of your uh, work. Give it a new name so we know exactly what it is. Okay, this is now ready. It can be downloaded for printing. If we click now uh, and click on still, it will then download. We'll see it over here. Here it is. And that could be printed as is by opening it into the XYZ program and going direct. However, a further customization that we're hoping to have with students working with this is to be able to place a vent hole in the center and also a magma chamber uh, in the base. We might also wish to have the whole of the volcano split in half. To do this, we will first create the split. Take a hole, drag it so it is a fence-like arrangement, change the grid size to 0.5, use the midpoint and then drag this across until you get down to the 0.5. You can see it at the bottom here now. This will now be our slice across the volcano. You can see here that uh, it can divide the volcano in half. We'll just uh, zoom in so that we can see how close to the top we've got. We have got pretty close to the top. We could move it a bit more if we wished uh, or consider that to be okay. If the, if the slice is not high enough, it's only just high enough there, we can use this white box to increase the level. This one here will raise the whole of the slice up. We want it to actually be at the base. We don't want it to um, leave part of the base intact. Next thing we want to have is a vent hole. We're going to drag a cylinder hole across. We'll hold the shift key down at the same time as dragging this in and that will give us the opportunity of making a cylinder that has both dimensions the same and we will drag it up so it is tall enough. Now, now position your cylinder uh, at the point where you would imagine the vent would escape. You can see I've made this rather large compared to the size of the volcano. It's up to you to decide what size you want for your demonstration. You may also wish to have this so it does not stick out of the top. You might wish to have it so that it is uh, just below the surface. If the volcano does not have a proper crater or does not actually have uh, a crater lake, uh, this one doesn't have a proper crater, so it might be useful to have it just below the surface. Uh, you can decide 
what level you want it to have it at. I'm going to lower mine to just below the surface. You see that the volcano is underneath, the vent is underneath. Next we wish to have a magma chamber. You can create these with objects that you can find. For example, we could use this sphere here and turn that into a hole, or you could use the egg-shaped hole that we find further on down here. There's an egg-shaped hole which we can drag out and resize. Uh, in this example, I'm going to actually just use this quite large uh, semicircle. I'll line it up approximately from the top, and then the easiest way to position this is from underneath. We'll just drag that across um, so it fits approximately under the vent. And that can act as our magma chamber. Next, we'll group all of these things together. And now we have a volcano that is in two halves, so we can pull it apart. And we'll be able to see a magma chamber and a vent underneath. We need to save our work, and then we're going to download for printing. Since we already have one of the same name, it's going to rename it. Since it's downloaded, we can now open that directly, and it will go into our XYZ program. Here it is, and we are now able to see that uh, it has its uh, magma chamber, it has the vent, it has the slice across and the size is within the boundaries for printing. So we're now able to be able to print. If we click on the print button here, we need to have a USB connection through to the printer. If we click on the export, we can export to an SD card. Most of the time you will be exporting to an SD card. Connecting through to the printer has one advantage in that you are able to see the remaining amount of filament on the machine. We'll export to the SD card. We'll click on advanced and uh, we're going to change the infill density to an even lower one of just 5% so that we don't use up too much of the PLA. We can leave the quality at good and we won't need a raft or brim or supports for this. And we'll click on export. It asks us where does it want to go and it's already worked out that I have an SD card in here and so it's quite happy to put it in there. It makes a .3w file. I already had one in here so it's uh, renamed this again. Save that. The object slicing will take a small amount of time. Depending on the complexity of the object you're working with, the slicing can take quite a while. Object slicing has completed. We can see now we have the file name, the file type. We can see that we're working with PLA. It has given us an estimated usage of about 9 meters, uh, which is relatively good. If you're using a slightly larger volcano, you could get up to about 14 meters. We'll click on close, and we can actually zoom in on our image here, and you get to see the individual layers that it is planning to put down to be able to create this image. So you see the actual path that the printer is intending to take. We take the SD card out of the computer, so we're going to use the eject, and then we can put it in the printer and it is ready to print.